In this video, let's talk when an inductor is connected across AC. Let's first draw the diagram. This is AC. This is inductor. AC E is equal to E naught sin omega t and this is inductor L. This inductor this inductor will have the self induction and that self induction is also known as electrical inertia. So it first stresses the growth of the current in the circuit and gradually it allows the current to reach its peak. To find the current in this circuit, we have to write the equation for inductor. So here we can write E minus L di by dt is equal to 0 because we know that the flux is directly proportional to the current passing through the circuit and this flux is equal to Li where L is called the coefficient of self induction and d phi by dt is equal to L di by dt and the EMF is equal to minus L di by dt. So the EMF across the self inductor is L di by dt with a negative sign. Therefore, E is equal to L di by dt. Now, this E is equal to E naught sin omega t. That E naught sin omega t is equal to L di by dt. Now let us integrate L i integral of di is i and E naught sin omega t integration is minus cos omega t by omega. Therefore, E naught by omega cos omega t that is with negative plus t. Now this c can be made as 0 because according to the equation it should have the current terms. The current term cannot be constant here. Why? Because we are dealing with alternating current. So when we talk about alternating current it will be changing its direction as well as its magnitude. So C must be the current term and that current term as C is constant, this should be constant. So no current term can be constant in alternating current. Therefore, the value of C is 0. So the constant can be conveniently taken out. Now we get I is equal to minus E naught by L omega cos omega t. Now this L omega is called inductive reactance and it is represented by XL. So XL is equal to L omega which is known as inductive reactance. Inductive reactance has the same units of resistance which is ohm. This XL as L is constant, XL is directly proportional to omega or XL is directly proportional to frequency because omega is equal to 2 pi f.
Now, in this case, this is minus E naught by XL cos omega t. Now, to compare the phase, we have to write this in terms of sine. I can write cos theta as r sin 90 plus theta. But if I take this value and if I insert this negative here, it becomes minus pi by 2 and minus theta. But if the negative is inserted here, it becomes theta becomes positive. What is actually theta here? Omega t. So omega is always positive. Therefore, I must prefer this value. Therefore, I can write it as minus E naught by XL sin pi by 2 minus omega t. Now, this negative sign goes with the sign term. So, E naught by XL sin omega t minus pi by 2. Now, if we compare E is equal to E naught sin omega t, I is equal to I naught sin omega t minus pi by 2. This term is only known as I naught. Now, from these two equations, we can say the current lags and voltage leads. In the circuit having inductor with AC. Now we have drawn the graphs for resistance so similarly, we draw the graphs for the inductor for both voltage and the current. So this is the curve for EMF. Similarly, we can draw the graph for current. But here, if you take the current term, it is lagging behind by pi by 2. So here, if I note it down 0, this is pi by 2, this is pi 2 pi, 3 pi by 2, and so on. Now here, this current graph will be starting from, if it is at 0, it should be at the, this one. When it reaches It's when the EMF is at peak, it will be 0. Then when EMF is at 0, it will reach its peak. Next, when it is at negative peak, it reaches 0. Then when it is 0, it reaches its peak and it continues. So this is representing the graph for current which is 
lagging by pi by 2. So this is phasor diagram for EMF. And for current, it should be lagging by pi by 2. This is I naught. Now let's talk something more about this XL. XL is called inductive reactance. It is L omega. The SI unit is ohms only. And here, if we draw the graph between XL and Omega. Then what happens as XL is directly proportional to Omega, we get a straight line. So this is the graph representing XL versus Omega. Or the same is the graph with different scale XL versus frequency because omega is equal to 2 pi f. So these are the details we started with the circuit, the inductor connected across AC, then after that, we have written the equation for inductor and then we have solved that equation and we could finally see that in inductor, the current lags and voltage leads. And we have drawn the graphs for both the two and then we have drawn the phasor diagram. And this is the graph between XL versus Omega. Now let's see the animation of the same from the physics animations site where it is a collection of beautiful animations of physics. Let's go through that. We have theoretically discussed when the inductor is connected across AC, the potential will be leading followed by the current. The current lacks the potential by pi by 2. Let's see the same in this beautiful animation taken from physics animations site. Let's begin. Here this pink arrow is representing the potential phasor vector and the orange arrow is representing the current phasor vector. If you observe this graph, when the potential is at zero, the current is lagging, having the negative value. If the potential reaches maximum, the current will be reaching zero and the current is following the potential difference. So these are the phasor vectors and these are the graphical representation of it. At any one particular point, if you observe this one, when the potential here, if you observe this pink curve, the potential is reached zero by the time the current has reached its maximum. We can observe these readings from the ammeter and voltmeter. So here voltmeter is showing the zero deflection and ammeter is showing the peak. Now if you observe these deflections, there will be a phase difference of pi by 2. That means if it goes to the extreme, then this should come to the mean position. Let's watch that. Let's concentrate on the motion of the readings of voltmeter and ammeter. See, when it is at zero, it is at the extreme end. And when it is at this extreme end, this potential reading is showing zero. 
so it clearly shows that there is a lag in current when compared to the potential difference so the final conclusion is that when an inductor is connected across the ac source the emf leads and current lags by a phase angle of pi by 2